What's up guys, Bob Oscar here at Think Computers and we are checking out Synology SRM 1.1 which is their management software that goes with their routers. Now we're testing this on the RT2600AC which is their latest router. So we're going to go ahead and log in and walk you through. This uh, backend software is really great because it's super easy to use and it's very it has a really great graphical interface which if you're a beginner makes it really really easy to use and not like uh you're not scared to use it you can really easily go into things and change things around so when you log in here it kind of looks like a desktop you know that's the whole idea of the software is to be easy and make it like you're kind of like in an operating system so up here we have our main menu which will bring up this um, all of our stuff here and we can get out of that then over here it just shows your current speeds and if you click in it will go ahead and go to that and then over here we have just notifications um, your options here you know you can restart log out all that kind of stuff search so if you're looking for anything within the software you can easily find it and um, that is basically it so the main things that you're going to want to go to is the control panel and your network center so if we go into network center this will show us everything and it's just like an operating system you can go ahead and move the windows around as you can see so this uh will show us our current status so we have a connection to the internet and you can see our ip addresses and all of that and our wi-fi's we can easily switch on and off by just clicking here and this does give you a current speed so this will show us our speeds in a graph that constantly updates which is pretty nice um, we can see our device list here we only have one thing connected right now, which is, uh, or yeah, one thing connected here, um, which is our wired connection to this PC. But I like how they change it by, you can see the computers and then you can see what's connected via ethernet and then what's connected via wireless. You can go ahead and do that. You can see your CPU usage over time or load and then your memory usage over time as well. So if you really wanna know you know, maybe something's taking up a lot of CPU, you're wondering what it is, you can go ahead and see that. Under wireless here, we can go ahead and set up our things for your wireless. Now, one thing that's turned on by default is your 2.4 5 gigahertz auto selection. I had it turned off to do our to, to do our 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz test for the review. But if you turn this on, um, it will show one SSID and then depending on your device, it will auto select either 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. So it's something you wanna keep in mind. If you want them separate, if you want them together, you can switch that off. So this is all your information for those networks and you go ahead and set all that up. WPS, um, this does support WPS. So this uh, is really easy to use and you can go ahead and you know set that up. You can set up a guest network if you want. I have it turned off and it is turned off by default. And then you have your Mac filter, which you can go ahead and set up um, for different Mac addresses. Under internet, you can see your connection here and you can see all of this stuff, which will automatically be detected from your internet connection. So you really don't have to do anything. And then you have like, you know, smart WAN, um, which you can set up. Uh, quick connect and ddns you can set up ip ipv6 tunneling you can go ahead and set up and three and 4g uh things that you can connect a three or 4g dongle to this router and it will work um with this but obviously we don't have it plugged in so we can't go ahead and change anything port forwarding of course you can go ahead and create all these and it's really easy to do as you can see you know you can you know set what you want and your IP addresses and all that kind of stuff really easy to do port triggering and your DMZ you can again it's it's off by default so that's good uh, but you can go ahead and set that up local network this is where you're gonna set your IP address of your router your subnet mask and your DHCP whether you want it on or off um, it's on by default which it should be and uh, you go ahead and set everything that you want there and then you have your guest DHCP. So if you want to want them, you know, your guest network running on a different uh, IP address, you can go ahead and set all that up. And then IPv6, you can, you know, go ahead and configure that. Static routes, you can create those. DHCP clients, um, you can see the clients that are here um, and all of that. So if you're wondering, you know, what uh, some, somebody's connected to this, what who are they or whatever, you can you can go ahead and see that. DHCP reservation, you can go ahead and add those. IPV, IP, <laughs> IP TV and VoIP, you can set that stuff up as well. Um, parental control, 
this is pretty easy to set up. Um, you can set di different policies for different uh, computers. So, you know, sometimes you just set a, a lot of routers allow you to set like a default policy for different websites and things like that. But this, you can do it by device, which is kind of nice because you, know, you want to look at certain things, but you don't want your kids to look at certain things. You could go ahead and set that up. You can also set up a web filter, um, different things that you could go ahead and do there. That's more generic, so you blocks everything. And then block page style, you can set um, a custom block page that will come up when something is being blocked. Under traffic control, you have your device list again, and you can set up different things for it. Uh, you can set custom speeds or priorities. So if you have a gaming machine, you wanna put that on high priority, you can go ahead and do that. Under advanced, uh, we have to enable traffic control to do it, uh, but you can do advanced settings, you can monitor everything, and um, you can create reports and things like that as well. Under security, um, this is just basic settings. You know, you can, um, you know, this browser right here, we can set logout time for 15 minutes if, if there's no action, so somebody can't just jump on this and change things. Um, DOS protection, you can turn on or off, it's off by default. VPN pass through, you can uh, you turn these all on or off if you want to. Under firewall, you can create um, different rules and things like that and, and, and allowing IP addresses and all of that. Under service, you can set up um, your internet services if they're enabled, if they're disabled, um, different things that you can do there. And then auto block, you can enable auto block. So, you know, if somebody tries to log in so many times, it will block them. You might want to set that up if people are trying to brute force your router for some odd reason. And then operation modes, um, we have it set up as wireless router, but you can do it wireless AP and a repeater, which is nice. Um, one thing that's really great is that as technology evolves and we buy new products, it's just good to have another wireless access point in your home so you can you know use one use you say you buy something new you know a couple years you can still use this as a repeater to get better wi-fi signals so that's pretty cool and if you just want it as wireless access point you can set that up as well but of course we have it set as router so that's everything in your network center now control panel that's more stuff to do with the router itself and different things so again let me move this over uh, we have our you know administrator password and everything like that and if we had storage connected uh, we can set up our share folder permissions and things like that you can you know different password settings you can enable two-step verification and all that kind of stuff domain settings if you want them and LDAP if you want to set that up under storage uh, we don't have any storage devices but you can set up media indexing and all that kind of stuff if you want um, this does have, I believe, at least one USB 3.0 port on it, um, so you can connect a mass storage device that way. File services, um, you know, you can enable Windows File Service if you want, um, Mac File Service as well. So again, you can use this as sort of a file server if you wanted to. Um, under services, you can enable SSH, you can enable SNMP uh, if you wanted to as well, and NTP. Under notifications, you can set up email notifications. Um, so if something's going on, you can go ahead and get an email notification. You know, things are changed and you didn't change them, it will send you a notification, which is nice. Uh, you can also set this up for SMS um, and push services as well and all of that. So you can set up your different events and um, you know, get emails, get SMSs, get all that kind of stuff if you want. And then under device, we just have our information here. Um, you know everything that's going on and then you can like turn your LEDs on or off and I love this because sometimes you're in a room say a dorm room or maybe you have this in your bedroom and if you're like me I'm like I don't sleep very well so the ability to turn the LEDs on or off or even set them on a schedule so they'll turn off say at 10 p.m. when it gets dark so they're not annoying to you when you're trying to sleep or whatever it may be um, I really like that printer um, you can add a network printer on here as well and like a reboot schedule so you can schedule reboots on the system if you want you know you can go ahead and do all that and then on our system you just have updates and things like that and every time you go in here it will check for the latest update i believe we're running the latest uh well, i guess there is a new update so there is a uh new update that is available and you just click download it it easily installs restarts your router and you're good to go um 
you can back up your configuration, you can restore, and you can restore to factory defaults. Really easy to do. And I like that I can do it via software. I don't have to go to the back of the router, find a pin, and hit the button. You just don't have to do that anymore. Um, so that is really nice there. SRM settings, um, you know, that's everything to download SRM and get it set up. Uh, regional options, I don't know why we have this set to this. Uh, it is correct, but it should be this one, uh, this negative five. Um, but you have all that right there. Login style, uh, you can just set up your different login styles and your Synology account. Um, you can set up your Synology account so then you can access your router settings from the internet, uh, which is pretty cool as well. So that's pretty much everything there. Now, we also have, uh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll leave without saving. Um, if we go into Package Center, so I've never opened this on this router, um, but Package Center is basically like apps for your router. So there's different things that you can set up. Um, I'm trying to make this bigger. I guess I can't make it all that bigger. Um, but there's, there's not a whole lot. There's obviously a lot more when it comes to their uh, their NAS devices, but you do get your VPN plus server, intrusion prevention, DNS server, cloud station server, uh, download station, media server, radio server, VPN server. So these are like apps that bring even more to the router than obviously just being a router. These make things uh, much better and it's cool that you're able to do this and basically install apps on your router. So that is pretty cool. And then uh, there's just help which is all the help here and it, it makes it easy. So if you're looking for something, you can go ahead and find it. Um, you know, and obviously you can search for different things. So if you're having issues, you can go ahead and go into there. And um, there's also like log center, which will, let me move this all the way. So which will, um, you know, go over your logs and set log settings and, and all that kind of stuff. and. You know, so if you if something happens, you can go ahead and see it. And if I can move this up and stretch this down, you can see different things that have gone on, and we can look at them and see what's going on, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also network tools, um, which allows you to ping, trace, trace route, and set up wake on LAN, and you can go ahead and do that. And I believe we have security advisor. Um, so this is gonna do this whole thing, um, which will scan and everything. Um, I wish we could, uh, yeah, we're gonna stop the scan. But um, this security advisor obviously scans everything and, and sees uh, what's going on and it will give you tips to you know make your security settings better and all that kind of stuff, So which is cool as well. It's great for first time users obviously and i believe that's pretty much it uh, you have support center here and um, this allows you to email support um, you know you can set up your email and go ahead and send them an email uh, through the router which is pretty cool and remote uh, you can enable remote access and all this kind of stuff so if you are having an issue and synology contacts you and says uh, we we want remote access to it you can go ahead and set that up um, so they can go in and change the settings so you don't have to do anything. So that is basically it for SRM. I, I did a quick overview. Obviously, I didn't go super in-depth, but it is really great. Um, it's super easy to use, and it's just like Synology's uh, NAS software. One of the best out there, and if you're a first-time user, this is very easy to use. Now, if you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave a comment below. And uh, again, this is running on their RT2600 AC router. So again, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Until next time, catch you guys later.